Cast programs. The Tron Cast is back, and this toy review is going to be on like Tron because Big Bad Toy Store has a pair of Tron figures that are on clearance right now. They've got Kevin Flynn, who comes in a box, and they've also got Tron himself, who comes in a non resealable uh, blister card packaging, unfortunately. Would have preferred that they both came in a box that was resealable. These are from Diamond Select and were released quite a while ago and had really no interest in picking them up at the price they were. But they are currently $15.99 for Tron and $11.25 for Kevin Flynn. So I'm thinking at those prices, there's going to have to be a lot wrong with these to disappoint me. But let's open these up and take a look at them. And here they are out of the box, and the first thing you can probably notice is that we've got a leaner. Reminds me of my husky. The uh, They do include stands, which is nice, but it looks like the post isn't quite long enough. So that is a really heavy figure. And so you're going to need something a little that's deeper than that it's barely hanging on to there it comes off really really easy and also the ankles are unusually tight on this guy so when you're pushing like this you got to push real hard and then it just suddenly goes like that and if you're not careful you'll get bit which I did get a little pinch right there so just be mindful of that. The stands are included, but they, they kind of suck. Coupled with how the, um, the ankle articulation is, you can have it tilting too far back, or you can have it tilting too far forward, but it doesn't seem to want to stay right where it needs to be, which is uh, weird. Feels the same way on the other foot too. Flynn comes with only one accessory, his identity disc, which you can plug into his back. And once again, the post is very, very short. So it's actually really easy to slip it in there behind this sash that he's wearing. And just a shout out to the uh, Tron commentary that I recently did with Eric. And there is a part of the commentary where we talk about why the actor Jeff Bridges was equipped with a sash and he was the only one in the movie. Um, but anyway, this is a nice floppy kind of rubbery material. So there's no issue slipping the disc in behind there. But once it's in behind there, it's like it's barely on there. It doesn't really plug in and st stay. The sash helps hold it it just it doesn't feel very secure in there but the sash is holding it no swappable hands on this guy unfortunately and no uh, no luck holding the identity disc you can't really hold it one-handed you might be able to since there is a double jointed elbow two-hand the disc. I certainly hope Tron is able to two-hand the disc over his head because that's the big iconic pose. Yeah, you can do that. You can hold it two-handed. The heads on these guys feel like they are a little, like, slouched. Just, I keep wanting to move the head back, especially on Tron. It's, it's sort of this kind of looking down heroic look, but it, I just I want to fix that, and it doesn't it doesn't uh, look up. Same problem on Tron, the identity disc, and he doesn't have the sash to hold it in place. You can plug it in there, but it takes it takes nothing to get it off of there. Tron comes with a whole bunch of extra accessories. He's got some different hands that looks like some kind of a 
disc gripping hand. It's got a sort of Obi-Wan Kenobi, Ewan McGregor, Obi-Wan Kenobi type of hand. Looks like another disc gripping hand and then the Kenobi hand also. And these are really cool. It's the uh, identity discs with a uh, trail going behind them. So you can um, light them up a bit. Really nice translucent effect on them. So if you get the both of them, then you can just swap the hands out from uh, Kevin. That comes out pretty easy. And let's try this one right here. Attaching this is kind of tricky. Just doesn't want to seem to lock into place on this hand. Um, the other hand doesn't seem to really work. This hand, none, none of this really seems to be compatible. I'm trying to stick this. It would look great if I could stick this disc between these two fingers, but it's just too heavy to be held into place there. And trying to stick it into his gauntlet just wants to fall off to the side. Ah, here's the trick. Like so. You have to put it in sideways like that. And then it's a really good secure hold on it. The only issue with that is then the disc is upright instead of laying flat, but that is a cool effect. Disc being thrown and then drawn. We can swap out the other hand. Thankfully, this is a really bendy material, this gauntlet right here. Guard against breaking. Pop in the new hand. Material is a little gummy, similar to G.I. Joe Classified. And then for this one, kind of the same deal. Slip the disc in between. Whoops. Not having much luck with that hand, so it actually works better with this uh, kind of at rest hand. Because if you push it all the way, you get that little click, it actually does get a good grip on it. Perfect. That's good and sturdy. And there's the two grid warriors hurling their identity discs. Really nice effect. Just takes quite a bit of work to get them into a dynamic action pose. These stands are just terrible. Some of the worst I've seen. Just barely gripping onto there, not holding the weight of the figure, it keeps popping out. And then those ankles are just such a pain. See how wobbly he is. Once you get him in the pose, you got a great looking figure, but I wouldn't call it fun. Futzing, getting them into these positions. And let's take a look at the likenesses of the figures. Bruce Boxleitner, not a huge, huge star. Babylon 5 fans are very familiar with him, or Scarecrow and Mrs. King fans. But I would say that's a bang on sculpt of him. He doesn't have all that distinctive a look to him. But yeah, I'd say that's, that's a perfect Boxleitner. And the Tron T detailing on the chest. Really beautiful detailing all throughout the figure. I don't think it glows in the dark. No, it does not. And the disc probably doesn't either. Nothing. 
and then the likeness on Kevin Flynn, Jeff Bridges. Uh, yeah, it's it's a pretty good sculpt. It's Bridges again. There aren't that many Jeff Bridges figures, toys to compare with, but I think it's it's good. Similar detailing to Tron. I think the backs are no, the, they're the same. Very similar. Might be the exact same body actually. Same boots. Just a sash on Kevin Flynn with the same helmet. Nope, different helmets. Flynn has a kind of a stripe detailing on the back and Tron doesn't. It's very, very similar. And I'll close it out with a 360 view of each one, starting with Kevin Flynn. The thing about Tron is it's all about that glowing world, glowing grid neon at night. So the disc itself is great because it's got some translucent to it. Throw some light on it from some different directions and it looks really nice, but the, uh, the costume, costume is a representation, a perfect representation of what the movie costumes in 1982 looked like when the actors walked off the set to the cafeteria area. Like, yeah, that's exactly what the costumes look like, but they don't look like the costumes look like in the actual movie. There's nothing glowy, reflective, shiny about them. It's just what they look like hanging on the rack. They're missing that movie magic, I think. So it is cool that the detail is so true to the costume, but I just wish there was a little, little more um, Tronness to it, something glowy, something uh, a light up effect like the Tron Legacy toys had. This is an original, or actually this is a, a reissue of an original Tomy Tron figure. It's by NECA, I think made these. And so they're translucent and just that little bit gives them like a, an otherworldly look to them. So uh, these did get released in a similar color scheme to the original Tomy ones. There are translucent versions of these figures, and I think they look a lot better, not just for being homages to the original 80s toys, but also just looking like computer programs instead of um, actors in a costume that need, needs an effect added to it to look interesting. And this is a major bummer. The big Tron pose from the the poster. Tron looking up, hands outstretched, disc floating up, Yori beside him. You can't do it with this figure. He won't look up. He doesn't arch back very much even though he has an ab crunch. And Despite all the articulation, he just doesn't have enough range in the shoulders to really get that disc up there. Another problem, everything's always falling off of these guys. Another issue is the disc has this post in it, so if you have them holding the disc like that, you got that ugly post showing, so then you have to hold it upside down. Another option to try is taking the disc with this trail on it, although it doesn't look quite right either. And then you've got this trail blasting him in the in the face. It just doesn't work. So that's pretty disappointing that uh, Tron's not able to do the Tron pose. I think you ask any Tron fan, what's the Tron pose? They're probably going to tell you it's the pose from the poster. So you're uh, kind of stuck with him just standing there stoically or doing an action pose like this with quite a bit of tinkering and a lot of patience and balance. Are they worth the sale price? Well, to quote Kevin Flynn and Tron Legacy when Clue asks him if he is to 
create the perfect system? Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I think they are worth the sale price. Definitely not worth the full price. Uh, something for hardcore Tron fans. I think these are cool, but they're also frustrating. Getting them to stand, the limited articulation. They're uh, really nice looking figures, just not really nice figures to pose and play around and futz with. But there's enough detail in there that they make for some nice somewhat posable movie figures just like in the old days when McFarlane was doing the movie maniacs it's basically what these are they feel like they're uh, a little sturdier than the typical NECA um, movie figures these are diamond select instead of NECA so hopefully they will um, be a little more durable than NECA figures have been in the past but I'm interested to find out what the old school, longtime Tron fans think of these if they pick them up. So if you grew up on Tron, if you saw it back in 82 in the theater, and you've picked these up, let me know in the comments what you think of these. Do they hit the nostalgia button hard enough that you can overlook all of the flaws, or do they just come up too short? That's it for this review. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. Feel free to leave a comment below, and to join the tribe, hit subscribe. Nerd Mistake, and end of line.